Hi, I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com and today we are going to talk all about giving injections to your livestock. Now before we even get into this, I want to say that I am not a veterinarian, I am not a vet tech, I am just a homesteader and a person who has to give injections from time to time to their livestock and I wanted to give just kind of a brief overview of how injections work, the different types of injections and the things that you are going to need to make them happen. So please always consult with your veterinarian before treating your animal. Do not just take my word for it. Uh, hopefully this though is informational and kind of helps you feel confident that you at least understand the process and to help you be prepared for those times when you need to give an injection. So first of all, why do animals even need to get injections? Typically it's to treat something or to prevent something. So you might be giving a yearly vaccine to your goats like we do for tetanus or you might be giving a wormer, which is technically a type of oral injection. You might be treating something with antibiotics. There's a few different reasons why you might want to treat an animal. So first things first, we are just gonna talk through oral injection, and then we're gonna talk about the difference between subcutaneous, uh, intravenous, and intramuscular types of injections, and looking at the different tools that you're gonna need for each. So first up, it would be giving something orally. So if you give wormers at all, that technically is actually a type of injection. So for that, you'd be using something maybe like this. Um, this is just moxidactin, which we keep around. It's a pretty standard goat wormer. We don't worm on a schedule, but just as needed. And so this is one where you just take off the cap and you adjust to the correct dosage and then stick it as far back as your mouth as you can and push the little plunger. Nothing too complicated. Oral medications are very easy to give for the most part, depending on how cranky your animal is. Another way you might give oral medication is with one of these little jobbers here. This is, I think it was a quarter and it has a little plunger end here and you can put pills in here. We use this for giving copper boluses to our goats. I highly recommend having one of these and not just like shoving it in the back of their throat because you might get your fingers gnawed on by some pretty serious molars back there. So these are cheap, these are really easy to use. Um, the goats don't like it necessarily, but you can't tell them just take the pill with a little bit of water. If you could, it'd make life a lot easier. And they do have these in much larger sizes uh, for cattle and all sorts of things. Like if you're giving your cattle medication or putting a magnet in their rumen and things like that. So. These are how you can give pills easily to your goats. And then another way for giving oral medications before another liquid type medication that you're having to give in the mouth. It's nice because this can really reach far back in there so you can really shoot it in there. I have some friends that use herbal dewormers and so they mix up kind of their herbal medicine and just reuse this every single time. Uh, so these again are nice to just have on hand. And one last thing about oral medications is sometimes they'll be referred to as a drench and they might not be referred to as an oral drench, but drench more likely than not means that it is an oral, something you're giving through the mouth. And if it's something that's a drench that's going on their body, then it will say a pour on or a topical. Okay, so let's talk about some different types of giving medications. So the first one I'll talk about, because it'll be really quick, is intravenous. And so right there it has a clue as to how that medication needs to be administered, and that is venous vein, it needs to go directly into the animal's vein. So whatever sort of medicine that you are giving that way is one that needs to be in their system immediately, in their circulation right away. And so intravenous is something that I haven't done. It's one that typically your veterinarian is going to do, or you are going to do under the supervision of a veterinarian or you would do after you've been trained by a veterinarian or someone who really knows what they're talking about because intravenous can definitely be more complicated um, and a little trickier to do and can also be a little more dangerous for the animal as well. So uh, intravenous is one that we're not going to go over in much more detail than that, but that's information you need to know. As a homesteader, a small farmer, typically that's not something you're even going to have to deal with. And again, if you are, it might be a call the veterinarian type situation. The next type we're gonna talk about is intramuscular. And so that means, again, it's got a clue right in the name, muscular. That is an injection that's going into the animal's muscle. The most common place to give an intramuscular medication is in the neck. Typically it's the neck because it's a good kind of meaty area to give an injection. And you don't wanna do it typically in like a shoulder or a rump, even though those are very meaty areas because again, those are meaty areas, so if something happens because of the injection, you could be potentially ruining the meat in that spot. And one thing you wanna be aware of is certain medications, you can only give a certain amount in the neck. For example, I was giving an injection of LA-200, an antibiotic to our calf, and was advised by my veterinarian to not do more than 
10 cc's per injection site. And thankfully she was about 200 pounds. So that worked out just fine. But that's something you also want to keep in mind is maybe using multiple injection sites on an animal. Intramuscular is used for medications that are ones that you also want to get into the system fairly quickly because there's more red blood cells and tissue in the muscles that are going to help to disperse that medicine. Uh, so it's a little bit faster than the next one we're going to talk about, but not as fast as intravenous. The last one we're going to talk about is called subcutaneous, also known as sub-Q. And subcutaneous means it is going underneath the skin. I will show you here on Juneberry again. This is another one that's very typically given in the neck or around the neck in front of the shoulder or even kind of in the armpit, somewhere where you can get up a little bit of extra tissue. And you typically just kind of pull the tissue up and make a little bit of a tent shape. And then you uh, plunge the needle into the tent so that way the needle for sure goes into the skin it doesn't poke out the other side of the skin and then you know, just shoot your medicine outside of the animal it goes in uh, and is injected okay so those are the kind of main ways you're going to give your medicine to your animals uh, another thing that you might see from time to time is it will say a topical drench or a pour on drench something like that and again that can be used for warmers and things where you're literally pouring it onto their back usually between their shoulder blades so kind of the same thing if you're familiar with giving your dogs or your cat like a flea or tick type medication all right now that we have covered the different ways that you can give injections and medications to your animals let's look a little bit at the different types of needles because this can be really confusing and overwhelming when you first get started so first thing when it comes to needles or even giving oral medications sometimes is the question what is the difference between between an ml, a milliliter, and a cc, and the answer is nothing. So if something says give five mls and your syringe only says cc's, it's the exact same thing, so don't panic. Next, let's talk about the different parts of the needle and syringe. So technically this part here, so you see there's no needle on here, this is the part that the medicine goes into that has a little plunger, this is the syringe. And then this here, this little pack that I have, these are all the needles and so you can buy them separate like this you have syringes and then you have needles and then you can kind of mix and match different sizes so if you only need this goes up to six mils so if I need a smaller dosage I can go ahead and use this little 20 gauge needle on this size for my goats or what have you versus if it's my cows I might I probably wouldn't use a 20 gauge needle I'd probably use something a little bit bigger on my cows but um, you can use them on different size syringes, if that makes sense. But also, it is really nice, you can pick up just these packs like this. So these are uh, 22 gauge one inch needles, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And so these are really good for goats, for giving, um, for giving like goat vaccinations like I talked about. So this has the needle, the syringe, it's all there at one shot in a nice little sterile envelope. And so I normally just pick up a couple of packs of these when it's vaccination time because it makes it go really quick and easy. So needles come in different sizes and so do the syringes. And so let's talk about needle sizes. Needles come in two different measurements. One is the gauge and one is the length. So the gauge is where you're gonna see 16, 18, 20, 22 gauge. And gauge means how big around the needle itself is. So if you are, doing a larger animal that's got kind of a thicker skin or you're injecting something that is a thicker solution, you are gonna want a thicker gauge needle, which means you want a lower number. It's the same type of thing when you're talking about like shotguns and things like that. So I will put up a picture here to show you the difference between uh, two different gauges of needles. I believe these are a 16 gauge and 18 gauge. You can just see that the needle width across is a little bit bigger in the 16 gauge and is a little bit smaller in the 18 gauge. And so if you're having, so if you're giving an injection to an animal like a goat that's pretty thin skin, you're probably gonna be using more like a 20 to a 22 gauge needle. The next measurement is the length. So you might have a 20 gauge one inch needle or a 20 gauge one and a half inch needle, for example. Here I have, these are 16 gauge. So these are pretty thick needles. These aren't ones I would use in my goats. These are ones I would use for cattle or possibly pigs. And so you can't really see the, <laughs> the, the gauge very well, but you can see the length difference. So this one is one and a half inches and this one is one inches. And so the reason why you want different lengths on your needles 
depends on what sort of injection you're giving. So intramuscular, right, you gotta get through the skin and into the muscle. So you're gonna want a little bit longer of a needle. Versus sub-Q, subcutaneous, like we talked about, is under the skin, you're gonna need a, a shorter needle, it's gonna work just fine to get it just under the skin layer and not into any deeper tissues. So some last thoughts about giving injections to your animals is make sure that you are using clean needles with each individual animal. So don't give a vaccine to a goat with one needle and then go and stick it back in the bottle and give a vaccine to another animal. You wanna use a clean one every time. They're not very expensive and it's just really good animal husbandry to use clean needles, clean syringes every time. So this sort of an oral one is one you can easily clean out, but if it's something you are injecting, one of those plastic ones into their bodies, after you use it on one animal, cap the needle so you don't stab yourself, toss it in the trash. Even if you are using the needle on the same animal, so let's say you need to give 10 cc's of something to an animal and your needle only goes up to five, so you fill it to five and then put it in the animal. Don't put it back inside the bottle then to get your next five and put it in there. Throw it out, grab another five cc one and fill it fresh. So you don't wanna be cross contaminating things like that. And the very last thing to think about when it comes to giving injections to your animals is withdrawal times. So that's something, again, make sure you're talking with your veterinarian and reading labels carefully on the products you're using with your animals. If certain medications are gonna have a withdrawal time, meaning you're gonna have to wait a day, two days, three days before you want to maybe consume the milk from that cow or that goat. Or if you're planning on having that animal be a butcher animal, if you give an antibiotic, it might be a 30 day window between giving the antibiotic and when that animal should then be processed. So keep that in mind too when you are giving your injections and you should be good to go. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was really helpful for you. I know when I was first getting into livestock that this was kind of confusing for me. Please check out the blog post if you want more information about what size needles work best for what type of animals. I have a whole chart on there that helps you figure out what gauge and what length for what type of animal for what type of injection. I really appreciate if you like, subscribe, share. It helps my channel reach more people. You can always find a new video here every single week and two new posts over on the blog about farming, family, food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.